Imagine being able to generate stunning, high quality images with just a simple text prompt, no design skills required. So whether you're a student creating visuals for a project or a teacher looking to enhance lesson materials, Adobe Firefly is your new secret weapon. And today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how to use it. Hey everyone, my name is David Basulto. I'm an award-winning media arts instructor. And if you love learning about creative tools that make content creation easier, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I post tutorials, tips, and tricks to help students and educators master digital media. So hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss another video. Let's dive into it. So this is Adobe Firefly. I absolutely love this app. It's part of the Adobe Creative Cloud. So if your school is using Premiere Pro or Photoshop or any of that, chances are you've got this free as well. If not, I believe it's $4.99 a month, but I would talk to your administrators or your teachers and ask them to get this in your classroom because it's super powerful and it's a needed tool going forward. So let's dive into it. So here you go to firefly.adobe.com and right away you can see some really cool creations that people have done. It says get creative with Adobe Firefly. And one of the things that's easy to do is you just go down here. Now here's generate video. So generative video is coming to Adobe Firefly. Currently you have it in Adobe Premiere Pro. I believe the beta version still has it. I don't know if the new version of Premiere has their generative extend tool. So now you can have a scene in a video you guys create and all of a sudden you're like, I needed five or 10 more seconds. You just have to drag it over and extend the video and AI will take over the rest. That's amazing. We'll do that in a separate video showing you how to do that. There's two things in Firefly that I like to use and one of them is text to image. We use this all the time. So we do music videos with AI generated songs. We use Suno for that. Let's click on text to image. And now it's going to pop up a bunch of really cool images. And one of the things that I love is that students will look at this and go, oh my God, I can't design this. I'm not a Photoshop master or this huge photographer. I don't know macro photography. If you could look down the bottom left, you'll see that mushroom. I, how do I make that? You know, and when I start to show them, hey, you just need to describe what you want to see on the screen and then it'll just make it so. Down below here, you'll see generate a prompt. So I'm just gonna click on that to erase what was there before. Let's say it's history class and we're talking about the Revolutionary War and I wanna do a shot of Washington crossing the Delaware and I'm sure you can find that up on the web and click, right click and save it to your desktop and then you're using somebody else's image or a famous painting or whatever. But maybe you wanna do something. So I'm gonna say an image of George Washington -ton crossing the Delaware at, at night, very foggy. Let's just, just do that for now. Let's see what comes up. So I just press enter or generate on the right side. And now it's going to start to pull us into the Adobe Firefly item. So this doesn't look right at all because the Delaware River, probably modern day, is like has bridges and stuff so obviously that's not going to work for this so i'm going to do i'm going to add some stuff in here and this is what i like about it because it makes students think about what they're saying instead of just giving general prompts they have to really be specific so very foggy at night i'm going to put during the revolution let's see if that changes during the revolutionary war soldiers in the boat with him. Let's see what that does. So now we're getting a little bit more to what we wanted. You know, we can see I get rid of the bright lights, etc. It's looking a little, honestly, to me, it's looking a little something from Venice. <laughs> so I don't think we want that. This bottom left one here looks a little better. Boats are um, 17. 76 era canoe type. Uh, let's see if we change that a little bit. Okay, so that looks a little bit better to me. So uh, I we should also write um, very snowy. Let's see what that looks like. 
Okay, so now we're starting to get a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to put, I'm going to do very snowy chunks of ice in the water. And let's see what happens. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit better there. I like this. I like where we're headed. If I expand on, let's say, this one here, that looks pretty good to me. We can also, uh, you know, change. I don't want the snow falling, but you understand what I'm saying. All of a sudden, we're creating our own imagery to tell our stories. And that's what I love about this. Um, now, as I look through this, some of the things I can do here is I can upscale the image to make it a more high resolution. I can do a thumbs up or thumbs down on feedback. I can go right here and download it as is. I can put a star to save it to my favorites, which I actually tell my students to do all the time. I'm like, you know, if you created something and you really like it, but maybe it's not for this, save it for later. You know, we'll, it might be something you want to use at another time. And then down here, if we hit that, you can copy the link, save it to the library, open Adobe Express, all kinds of fun stuff. Okay. So we've got our four images. Um, do I like them or not? You know, we're going to keep them. I'm fine with that for now for our first image. So now if I go to the left here and go into all the settings, uh, you can see we've got general image, uh, Firefly image three, and that's the latest model. So I like to use the latest model. I'm going to keep it there. Fast mode. I always like that. It makes things go faster. Aspect ratio. So here's where I can change it to landscape four by three. I make sure my students all use widescreen. So I'm going to run that one more time and we're going to do that. So that looks a little better. So now the bottom right one, is starting to look a little better to me. So I'm gonna keep that one maybe. Um, and so let's keep going. So now underneath that, it says content type. Now this is a photo. If I go to the left here and click on art and I regenerate that again, let's see what comes up this time. So now it's more of a painting, which I think is really cool. So this one here is looking a lot better. Let's pull this one up and you can see that it looks pretty cool there, okay. So I'm going to leave it at art down underneath art. There's an area called composition. So maybe you have a composition in mind that you want this to reflect. I'm just going to use, there's a gallery here and there's also these six that they show you, but we can look through all of these and see what looks interesting just for the heck of it. I'm going to look and do something like this. And now I'm going to go back It added down here, composition reference. So I'm going to hit that. Now, how is that useful? Maybe I want to use that reference from a painting online or a sketch online or something from that period that someone had drawn. We can use that as a reference going forward. So now with the reference, I mean, I'm getting some really interesting things here. This back here could be like fire or, or cannons or something. So that's what you would do for reference type. Okay, let's keep going down. Style. So now do you have a specific style that you like? Do you want it to be like Monet or, or whatever? You can choose things like that. So let's go through this a little bit and see how this changes up things with imagery and stuff. So let's see, here's architectural, 3D, digital illustrations, neon, landscapes. What's in landscapes? Anything cool? What is this? Let's try this one here and let's hit the generate again. And now it's going to start to pull from that. So now I brought in this big image. The boat's really tiny down there. Not really what I was looking for. So I'm going to get rid of that under style reference. And let's go back here. See if there's anything else we like. I'm just going to pick this pencil sketch and see what it does to our imagery. And notice how I'm just doing this. This is just making great stuff. Look at that. That's really cool. That looks like something that could have been made during that time. So as we, and then imagine you have this in your video about the battle of Delaware during the revolutionary war, and you, now you could start to zoom in, in different editing apps that you're using, preferably Premiere Pro. It's, you can start to zoom in as you're telling it using the Ken Burns kind of effect. So one thing I forgot to talk about is in composition and style reference, you have sliders here. So you can do the strength if you want the strength to be 100% or 50% or 0% if you want, you know, the visual intensity of it. So you can do things like that. So let's go back to this one where we added this composition here. 
and I'm going to put my strength at 100, and let's see what that does to it. And there we go. So that is really looking like that image. So if you really want it to look spot on like that image, you can do things like that. Now, if I bring it down to zero and run it again, it's going to be completely different. So it comes at a default at 50%. And there you go. It's just, it, it has the river in there, but it's changed a little bit, right? So you can do the sliders. They work great. Something to think about. Okay, now... I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to get rid of my composition reference and my style reference, and I'm going to run this again. And we should be back to square one. Okay. So now in the effects areas where they can really have a lot of fun, there's bokeh effects, there's layered paper, hyper realistic, etc. I'm going to go back to the top here and start doing something fun with this. I'm going to change this back to photo. And I'm going to add the bokeh effect. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, so we've got a little bit of lens flare going on. It looks more realistic now. I can click on hyper-realistic and the bokeh effect as well. Let's see what that does. Okay, so it's making it more rich. Let's go down. Let's get rid of the bokeh effect. Let's look at digital art here. Let's hit that for a second. Okay, so it's starting to give you all these. Here's another example of a giant bridge there that shouldn't be there. <laughs> so you got to watch what's going on all the time. Okay, so I'm going to go. And then down here in the bottom, I have different views of what we were looking at, right? So I'm going to go back a little bit. I believe this one was really, yeah, I like this one in the bottom right. So I'm going to go back to this one. And let's look down here and go into, um, I'm going to do... Digital art, leave that alone. Colors and tones, you can go in here and choose different colors that you want, vibrant colors. We'll kick cool tone because it's winter. Lighting, so now we can do some really cool lighting. I'm gonna do uh, dramatic lighting because they're crossing the Delaware. Camera angle, so now I'm just gonna choose for this one some landscape photography. Let's see what comes out of that. So that's really, look at this one that's just really, looking cool right here in the middle. And so you can just go in here and play it with this at will. It is so cool to use. Once I'm done here, I can go over here and click download and it will download it. It lets you know that you should let people know that this is AI. They're really into all that. Here are things you can do. If you want to click on any of this, it's going to open it up into Adobe Express if you're using that, which is another great tool from Adobe. So this is how you do text to image in Firefly. Let's go back for one second here and take a look at something else that you can do. Next to it is generative fill. And here I can upload an image. So I'm gonna go and upload an image. Is there any images of me? So here's a silly one there, I'll upload that. And now I can click on uh, background, select background here, click it once and it gets rid of the background. That's pretty fast. How many of you out there are old enough to remember the days of using Photoshop for something like this and having to erase it all? And now look at how clean it is that uh, just one second, boom, with AI. Okay, so now I'm going to go in here and insert. I click the insert. That brings up the prompt right here. So I'm gonna say cows in the field. Let's see what it generates for me behind me. And this is really fun to use. I let the kids take pictures of each other and do fun stuff, appropriate fun stuff. So there I am with some cows behind me and it's just really fun, super simple tool to use. You can you have the remove tool. So if you wanna cut things out, maybe I wanna get my finger out. I mean, you can do all kinds of stuff. I can expand it. It'll, it's gonna take me into another app to do that, which I don't want to use right now. So I'm just gonna stay here. And then pan, I can just do stuff like that, which is not really something I wanted to do. So we're going to go back. Select background, there it is. And then once again, I'm gonna say a field of cows, midday. Let's see what comes up here. And in a few seconds, there I am standing in front of a field of some beautiful cows. So as you can see, 
Adobe Firefly is just awesome. It's a great tool to use. I highly recommend you guys using it with your students or if you're a student, ask your teachers to let you try this out for a project or do it on your own. But this is the way you can use AI to make really cool imagery for yourself that you own. Maybe you can make stuff to put it on t-shirts, start a t-shirt business. I mean, it's endless. So I hope you like this walkthrough of Adobe Firefly. It's a great tool. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I will address them ASAP. I'm David Basulto. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you're all about AI like me. I will see you guys in the next video. Mm.